Hey guys, Mark from Fred and Forward. Want to introduce you to my new friend. Check it out. That's right. <laughs> Brought it home. You know, in my last video, I talked about, you know, the Les Paul that got stolen from the store. And yeah, I picked it up at the end of the video. I'm like, sold. So yeah, here it is. Brought it home. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you a story though. You know, uh, I, I own a legendary brand, you know, Fender Strat up here on the wall. Uh, got it once upon a time ago, back in 1980, as a matter of fact. My first guitar, and really, I got that and nothing else. Uh, really, honestly, couldn't afford anything else. So, through the years as I was growing up as a teenager, through my 20s and working, and not as a professional or even less than amateur guitar player, I thought, you know, one guitar was enough. So the Fender Strat was basically all I've known. All I've known since since 1980, it's 2023 now. Of course, we go fast forward. There's a lot to talk about, but why did I buy <laughs> this Gibson Les Paul Standard? Why did I pick this up? Well, once again, wanted to own another legendary brand. And of course, had the Fender, went with Gibson, you know, bookshelf, both legendary brands. And on my channel, I've looked at a number of different brands. Um, but the Gibson Les Paul, I don't know, there's always been something about the sound, the humbucker, the way it, the warmth, you know, the the the, the tonality of, of the Gibson Les Paul is something that's always captured, you know, my, my, uh, my attention. So, you know, finally picked it up. And this is a story I want to talk about. So, yeah, you know, um, I just didn't, buy a Gibson Les Paul, you know, I shopped for one over two and a half years. Yeah. Two and a half years. Uh, I'm not exaggerating. I've been looking for one for quite some time. Once again, I'm not a professional, less than amateur. Uh, I don't play, uh, you know, professionally have played in a couple of bands and have, as of recent, I've been in and out of a few, uh, you know, maybe talk about that in another video. But once again, going back to the Gibson Les Paul, um, shop for one in three different states 38 stores and yeah i've had my feel of everything from you know the basic junior the special uh the custom the traditional and so on there, there's so many brands there's so many there's so many names uh models to the brand um but what struck me was a, a 60s les paul uh, there was just something about the burst buckers that they're equipped with, and uh, that's what captured my attention. Went to many stores in Arizona, California, and throughout uh, the states, and what I found was all these Gibson Les Pauls, they're so different from one another. So you really gotta figure out which one's for you. And obviously I found one. Tried a number of Les Pauls on the channel. Take a look. There's a Unburst. I've played a few of them on uh, a number of occasions. Uh, there's a Cherry Burst I played um, and a couple of other ones. But there's so many, there's differences in the neck. Uh, the hardware is pretty much consistent. But what you've really got to look for is the neck, the neck profile. You know, everybody's hands are different. Of course, mine are, and I've only got the three fingers to play with since I've mentioned to you, you know, in other videos about my accident. So for me, you know, it's all about touch and feel and obviously for you too. And what captured my attention on the touch and feel was the touch and feel of the neck of this particular 60s model. Uh, the neck is rounded and I don't want to say it's kind of like you know, the other legendary brand is a little fat and thick, but yeah, it is. Um, but it's, it's it's a different feel to this. Um, painted and lacquered, uh, like the other brand. Uh, down here by the profile, by the back bow cut, which there's not much, but there's, there's some good feel to the neck and it's so different than a bolt-on. And focusing on this particular model here, uh, it, it captured my attention, of course, because of the burst bus buckers, the, the pickups. But the touch and feel, you know, this profile, the fret job, the fret work, 
the 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 fretboard itself uh it, it just captured my attention a along with its grover locking tuners on this particular model here as you see and uh up close no pick guard that's what i like about this particular uh model here i don't really care for that particular pick guard it kind of looks and gets in the way uh but take a look You know, and, uh, you know, let me tell you, never really was a Gibson fan, never really was. But when I went out looking for, you know, another legendary brand, as I sound redundant, keep mentioning it, but, you know, it is, it's, it is a legendary brand. And when I went out looking for Gibson and introduced myself to him, I started the channel, and that was the whole reason. My, my wife gave me a budget to go out and buy the guitar, you know, of my dreams of my choice didn't know what it was didn't know what my dreams of my choice there's so many so many good quality brands out there whether they're domestic or international but when i focused on you know the gibson altars and, and a lot of these big box stores uh yeah there's a reason why they've captured my attention and have captured a lot of people's attention and as i captured as it captured my interest you know i went out to look for one like I um, wasn't in a hurry, didn't need one, and well, of course wanted one, didn't need one, and of course didn't need one in a hurry, didn't need one for a gig or a professional situation. Uh, wanted to get one for you know my little corner, for me, and uh, I went out and took my time, and I really took my time as I mentioned, 38 stores, three different states plus, and uh, finally. This model, this neck, this profile captured my attention and brought it home. And the story behind it being stolen from the store after I did the first video back in uh, 2022 when I first opened up the channel, I played it and oh, I fell in love with it. Put it back on the shelf. It was way out of my price range, as I mentioned. Way out of my price range. Just put it back on the shelf after I played with it for about two or three minutes. And then, you know, went on with the review and went off on the channel and just forgot about it. And then, I, of course, found out it was gone. Um, didn't know it was gone because it was stolen until, you know, I ran back into it. But, you know, gosh, once again, uh, let me show you the back side of it. And it, for it being used and stolen... It's in great condition. You know, it's got a couple of scratches and a couple of beltings and what have you. Um, but this model, uh, with its locking cable system down here below, as you see, and uh, everything was in great shape. You know, it's got some scratches and dings, but you know what? So what? Um, you can call it vintage if you like, but it is. It's a 2011 model. I love it. And uh, I'm glad I brought it home. So let's give it a listen. Everything on the equalization on the Marshall is, Marshall is straight up, and the volume is rather quaint. So let's take a listen. Let's start off on the rhythm. So yeah, guys, quick playthrough and, you know, a long story about this particular brand, this particular model, this particular guitar, and how it ended up in, you know, my life. And wanted to share this with you because, gosh, it's so close to home to me. And 
such a special brand to me and a lot of other people as well. So yeah, thanks for listening, you guys, and appreciate you uh, staying with me with this. And don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like. Thanks, guys.